Hi, I'm Erin at the Ohio History Connection in Columbus, Ohio. Welcome to my prehistoric story time. Today, we're going to read about animals that were really, really big and lived a really long time ago. So let's get started. First, we're going to read How to Wash a Woolly Mammoth. This book is written by Michelle Robinson and illustrated by Kate Hindley. Does your woolly mammoth need a bath? You'll need to prepare. Woolly mammoths are quite big, and wool is notoriously tricky to clean. Don't worry, just follow this step-by-step -step guide. Step one, fill the bathtub. If your mammoth is thirsty, this might take a while. Step two, add bubble bath. It's my favorite kind of bath. Step three, add the mammoth. Which one of these methods do you think is going to be the best to get a ma mammoth in the bathtub? Poking it with a broom or scaring it with a spooky mask? I think that heavy duty crane might be her best bet, but let's see what works. When all else fails, there's always cake. Sounds like she enticed the woolly mammoth with a tasty treat. Step four, start scrubbing. Don't forget to wash behind those ears. Step five, Wash his big, fat tummy. Careful, a mammoth's tummy is terribly tickly. Step six, open an umbrella and stand back. It's probably gonna take up a lot of water in that trunk of his and might make a big mess. Step seven, now for the really hairy bit. You're gonna need some shampoo, but not too much. Look at all those silly hairstyles that the mammoth is putting in his hair with the bubbles. Be careful not to get any in the mammoth's eyes. Oh dear, look at that mammoth running away. Where do you think he's going? Step eight. To get a wet woolly mammoth down from a tree. Uh-oh, do you think a woolly mammoth can climb a tree? How do you think you would be able to get a woolly mammoth down from the tree? Maybe poking him with a broom again, or maybe another tasty treat? Step eight, to get a wet woolly mammoth down from the tree, you'll need, let's see what she uses, a very strong trampoline. Oh no, the woolly mammoth jumped down, bounced on the trampoline, and he got all muddy again. Step nine, let him share a bath with you. Step 10, throw in the towel and snuggle. So do you think a woolly mammoth would make a good pet? Why or why not? I think a woolly mammoth would be really fun to have as a pet, but they're so big that there's probably not room in my house or in my backyard. And it seems like woolly mammoths could be kind of dirty creatures and I don't have a bathtub big enough. Maybe if I had a pool though. Well, actually, woolly mammoths are extinct. Did you know that there were once all kinds of animals that roamed the earth after the dinosaurs and before there were humans? Those species have actually all died out. Archaeologists and scientists think that it could have been because of disease or climate change or being hunted by humans that made them go extinct. There are actually all kinds of animals like the woolly mammoth that once lived here. For example, Conway the Mastodon. If you've visited the Ohio History Center, you probably saw this big guy. Or maybe if you visited another natural history museum, you would have seen um, other fossils of mastodons or similar animals. So looking at this fossilized skeleton and remembering the book we just read, do these creatures look like any animal you might know? Yeah. They look like elephants. They were actually the ancient ancestors of, an of elephants that lived thousands to millions of years ago. So I'm ready to learn a little bit more about these prehistoric animals like mastodons and woolly mammoths and maybe we'll learn about some more. Now we're going to read a book I have here with me today called Once Upon a Mastodon, all about prehistoric animals. This book is written by Bonnie Wirth and illustrated by Aristides Ruiz and Joe Matthew. I'm the cat in the hat. Oh, please turn the page to discover some animals from the Great Ice Age. 
Over two million years ago in the past, one third of our planet came to be frozen fast. In the cold, many animals did not survive and others went south where the warmth helped them thrive. Mammals that stayed in the north mostly were covered with fat and thick coats of fur. What is a mammal, you might like to know? I have some ideas, so I'll give it a go. A mammal is warm-blooded, has lungs and a backbone. But there's one other trait that I'd like to make known. Hey, do you have lungs? That's what helps you breathe, right? And a backbone? I bet if you bend over and try to touch your toes, you might be able to feel your spine and your back. We have lungs and a backbone and we're warm-blooded. That means we're mammals too. Let's resume. Moms feed their young milk from their mammary glands, and that's why they're called mammals, as I understand. The mammals you'll see on the tour I am giving are extinct, which means they're no longer living. How do we know how they looked, you might ask? We study their fossils, a difficult task. Experts can guess from very few traces how these beasts looked, both their bodies and faces, what they ate, how they moved, and how big they grew, if they were male or female, and how they died, too. Teeth, footprints, and bones from long, long ago are what we call fossils, a word you may know. The sloth of today is the size of a cat, but there once was a ground sloth much bigger than that. As big as an elephant, it had such long claws that it needed to walk on the sides of its paws. Look at those feet down there. It's walking over on the sides of them. This sloth sprint prints tell as clear as you please. It reared on hind legs to munch on the trees. Have you seen that word reared before? What do you think that word might mean? If we take a look at the picture, if it's rearing on its hind legs, those are the ones in the back. Yeah, it means it's standing up on its hind legs and it can reach all the way in the tops of the trees. It was so big. Come closer, my friends, that is, if you dare, and say hi to the giant short-faced bear. It stood 10 feet tall when on its hind feet. Sharp teeth and strong jaw were made to eat meat. 10 feet tall as if like there were two of me standing on top of each other. At 2,000 pounds, this furry big lug weighed almost as much as a VW bug. It's a small car. It's a big bear. Having sighted a bear, we will now move on to the great Ice Age cat we call Smilodon. It had these long fangs like sabers, and that is the reason we call it a saber-toothed cat. It hunted and scavenged, thing two says it's true, from Canada all the way down to Peru. Mammoths and mastodons, I will now tell you kids, belong to the order called proboscids. Standing 14 feet high, mammoths once put away 700 whole pounds of plant matter each day. 700 pounds would be like if you and maybe 12 of your friends or half of your class all got together, that's a lot of plants to eat. I don't like vegetables that much. Tusks, 16 feet long, growing outward and curled, made Mammoth the tusk king of the Ice Age world. 16 feet long would be like if three adults were standing on top of each other. Of mammal fossils, there are scads and scads, bones of the moms and babies and dads. In Hot Springs, South Dakota, 60 mammoths were found. Where a sinkhole was, they got stuck and drowned. Looks like they fell in or maybe they came in to drink, but the water was too deep or the sides were too high and they drowned and died. As their bodies decayed, their bones became fossilized over years and years and years. Mammoths and mastodons, some people will claim, with their fur, tusks, and trunks were really the same. But shorter of tusk, and with legs not as long, Mastodon was smaller, though still plenty strong. Mammoth's skull was domed and Mastodon's flat, but the difference you see goes well beyond that. 
The big difference lies in their teeth, not their bones. Mammoth's teeth were flat, mastodons shaped like cones. Were there humans back then? Yes, there were, by all means. The stars of their very own Ice Age scenes. These folks lived together in a family brood, making fire for warmth and cooking their food. They gathered up fruit and roots, nuts, and seeds, and killed to get meat and for their other needs. The Ice Age worker who is pictured here is chipping flint points to tie on his spear. The spear is how they killed these animals and hunted them. They were not just hunters, brave men of heart. These Stone Age people were skilled at art. From stones and shells and dried up seeds, they made headdresses and strings of beads. With a flute carved of bone or an empty conch shell, they would make music and some danced as well. But the thing they could make that stands well apart is their bold and colorful cave wall art. These great works of art are still being found on walls inside caves deep under the ground. In colors and lines, these Stone Agers drew the Ice Age mammals that they hunted and slew. Such beautiful pictures as you can see here, rhino, mammoth, bison, lion, bear, deer. But the one missing animal that I'd like to see in a bold cave wall picture is little old me. Do you think you would see a cat in a hat cave painting somewhere? I think probably not. The end. So I have something really cool with me here today. This is a bone, a fossilized bone, that's a vertebra from a mastodon. This is one of the many small bones that makes up the spine. Remember in the book we just read that it said one thing that makes us an an a mammal is a spine. So this is like one of the tiny bones in your spine, but this is not so tiny, right? The same bone in your body would be a couple inches long at the most, but this is more than two feet. It's a big animal. So archeologists could use these fossils to find out more about the animals when they find them. So they can think about how the bones look similar to or different from other animals and bones we know more about like the tusks of a mastodon, or like this bone, it looks a lot like ours, just way bigger. They can also think about uh, the size of these bones because this is so much bigger. They can see similar things like find it, figuring out that a saber-toothed cat is related to a cat of today, or the giant sloths look like the smaller sloths of today. They can also think about the types of teeth in the book we just read, it talked about a flat tooth that the woolly mammoth had. So that is to grind plants for an herbivore or the pointy teeth that the short-faced bear had because it's a meat eater, a carnivore. We know from the burning tree mastodon, which was excavated in Licking County here in Ohio, when they found the bones, they saw that there were cut marks on them indicating that this animal was at least harmed by a stone tool made by a human. That means we found out that humans and mastodons lived at the same time. Pretty cool, right? So that's all I have for you today. Thanks for joining me. Did you learn something new? Do you think that you could have give a woolly mammoth a bath? If you would like to learn more about mastodons, woolly mammoths, or other prehistoric mammals, be sure to check out the activities in the description or visit ohiohistory.org slash learn at home. See you next time. Thanks.